string obfuscation, which we started to talk about, you know, what if they move around the, uh, the, the basic support custom alphabet, what if they're dynamically constructing it? Um, they could certainly, you know, move it around and then, you know, do a new and then copy in, you know, this part over here to this part over here. That's one way. Another way that we see in real malware is this uh, string obfuscation where they're using this move and constructing it in, in memory where they, you know, say address, whatever, and they take this literal byte and they move it into a specific location, increment, take another byte, move it into the location, increment, and so on. And what they're doing is they're constructing a string, str in this instance, because 53 is ASCII, S, 54 is ASCII T, 52 is ASCII R. Um, another way of, of doing that is constructing it on the, on the stack, push 00525453, we'll push that onto the stack and store it in little Indian format, which means the first byte comes first. So you'll end up getting 53, 54, 52, 00, 0 same thing. So just two different ways of constructing strings dynamically that I've seen. And you will too. So if you take a look at this one under the ABT1 malware families, which you should have already unpacked that folder to your desktop, grab the WebC2 UGX, uh, load it into IDA, look at that particular function. We'll even increase this. Look at that particular function. And what are the uh, ASCII strings being created? I'll be curious if anybody recognizes what, uh, what may be going on. So I went to that function. Lower Ida went to, oh, there's a lot of local variables. Went to that function. And if we scroll down, we take a look, we see some moves going on. Move, move. And then we see these sequence of moves with 788545874. Seven, First thing I'll mention is um, a oopsie by Ida, and it's even highlighting it in red, in red here. EBP minus one six FH. Uh, that is var one six F, uh, but Ida for some reason had had a, a mess up, had a hiccup when it was analyzing this. I think this is a, a Ida free hiccup and and something that you wouldn't get with the pay version of Ida. Um, but you can fix it by um, right clicking on it, selecting manual. This is a way that you could, if you knew exactly what this was um, or a better way of, of interpreting it, you could put that, that in here. Um, but we're basically going to tell Ida to reanalyze by, by saying, or just remove it. Okay, and Ida goes, oh, okay, I'll reanalyze that, and oh yeah, it's var one six out. It's a little little quirk with the free version of Ida. Manual remove. Okay, it does that. And now there, that just gets them to line up. So if I put my cursor on these and press R, 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 not on these. O D O A. Anyone know O D O A? What's that? What's O D O A? Character return new line. Character return new line. You'll see that in uh, anything that we'll be printing out to the screen potentially, um, or maybe going over the network. HTTP protocol makes use of character return new line. So you'll see um, in, in hex dumps, ODOA. OK, so those are not printable, so not doing the R on them. 49, that's printable. R, 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 R. 
in this just to clean that up. Manual. So right now what I'm seeing is, or what are people seeing? Extension. Hmm? Extension names. Maybe extension names. Z, TXT, some some other thing, PNG. That's a that's a weird E with an umlaut. I don't know. I'm gonna convert that back. Header stuff. Oh, Corey. Yeah. Well, sort of. So PNG. One thing that jumped out at me when I was looking at this, PNG. Now the file format, right? PNG graphic. And it just happens that I've worked with the PNG file format before. And when I saw IN, that is a uh, section delimiter or, or a section name within the PNG file format. So I'm just curious if anybody else, you know, see this and it kind of jumps out at you. Um, or maybe you just go, huh, PNG, um, I -N, I don't know what that is, then you go to Google and type in PNG space I-E-N-D. You know, look it up. Use Google. The, you take one thing away from this, use Google. No. Um, I hope you don't only take one thing away from this. But, uh, but I look at this and I go, maybe it's doing some kind of PNG image file manipulation. Or it could be that it's going to, to use some kind of uh, 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 hide itself, make it look like a PNG image, maybe on the on the wire, um, send PNG images. So you know somebody opens up in Wireshark and goes uh, file transfer dot PNG. Oh, it's got the PNG header and it's got like one of the the common. Uh, uh, Specifiers in a section specifiers for PNG, you know, that's just a normal thing. So this is all part of the information gathering that will help you then dig into a person doing the pack analysis, are you seeing anything going on? And then they feed you back information that then helps you to hone in further on the uh, malware. So it's a iter process working through this data and that data. Use what you learn, dig further. So if I look at this, I, I, my, my brain automatically jumps to the notion that maybe they use this, this bunch of text here that they twiddle a few bits, like right after the PNG bit, or some part of this they would maybe twiddle some of those bits and transmit into an octopus looking PNG. Is that, is that a logical jump that I should be making or am I off the reservation? You mean, are you thinking like, um, I'm blanking right now. Are you thinking, uh, what's that? The the hiding in plain sight. Thank you. Are you thinking like psychography? Uh, not that advanced. Not that advanced. But but, yeah. but same direction. Um, yeah. I mean that's that's a potential. That that's one of these things where you go, okay, maybe you know I can certainly say that, huh? It looks like I see a PNG. I say I see I N. They might be doing something with PNG files, you know, talk to the person who's doing the, the network analysis to say, hey, I'm seeing this, you know, have you seen anything like that? And you can dig from there. Or you can go and say, okay, where else is, is are these strings being referenced? This is being built in memory and it's, you know, I N string starts at that address or R4C, see if that's being cross-referenced anywhere. And hey. It, it actually it is being cross uh, referenced somewhere further on down. You can go see you know what's going on. If I were to do that X on the on the where the stop pointing at my monitor. Um, if I do the the X on this one where the E is, you know I'm only going to get where where the E is. But if I actually do it on the start of the string, you can see where it's being referenced. Elsewhere. So if I do it on that, no, I'm just there. But if I do it above, oh, hey, that's being referenced somewhere else. And I can go take a look at 
where that's being referenced, how it's being used. And constructing the, the, the strings here, um, seeing how they're being constructed, will help you identify, okay, where's the actual like start that might be referenced somewhere else. 